Welcome to the channel! I trust that you're doing well! In this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use Coinbase in advanced mode for mobile app. If you're absolutely brand new to Coinbase, I do have a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial on how to use Coinbase's basic functions, and I'll leave a link for that video in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. In this video, I'm going to get straight into how to toggle Coinbase into advanced mode, then I'm going to cover the pairings, from there, I'll get you familiar with the user interface, where I'll show you how to buy and sell crypto using limit orders, market orders, and how to set up a stop loss. All of that and more with some tips and tricks along the way. If this is your first time signing up on Coinbase, I've left a link for you in the description of this video, as well as in the pinned comment down below. Feel free to use that link when signing up, and we'll both get $10 worth of free Bitcoin on your first $100 purchase. I'll also let you know that this is not a sponsored video. This video is not financial advice. This video is for educational purposes only. I also left some timestamps for you in the description down below, so at any point feel free to skip ahead to a section that might be most relevant to you. With all of that out of the way, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe. Let's get into the video. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is toggle Coinbase into advanced mode. To do that, we'll tap at the bottom where it says trade right in the middle there. So give that a tap. At the top of this page here, tap where it says trade. And in this pop-up, tap on advanced trade. Now we've toggled the app into advanced mode. And the first thing you'll see is all the different pairings that you can trade on Coinbase Advanced. Above the pairings is where you'll find the market types and we can just drag them left and right like so. And for example, if I was to tap on USD, now all the pairings displayed down below are quoted in USD. So if I wanted to buy a coin using these pairings, I'd need USD to make the purchase. And if I sold a coin using these pairings, I'd receive USD for the sale. If I was to tap on BTC, now all the pairings are quoted in Bitcoin. And it's the same thing. If I sold a coin using these pairings, I'd receive Bitcoin for the sale. And if I wanted to buy a coin using these pairings, I'd need Bitcoin to make the purchase. So you just simply tap on the pairing that you wish to trade. Now in some cases, the pairings might not be available to you. So if I was to tap on USD, and if I tap on BTC versus USD, you'll notice in my case here that this is set to view only market. And this is likely due to government regulations. I'm not located in the United States, so that's probably why I can't trade the USD pairings. But you can tap where it says learn more, and this pop-up window, tap on learn more again. And then Coinbase will give you a laundry list of reasons as to why you might not be able to trade certain pairings, but likely due to government regulation. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap on back here and tap back again. And what I'll do is I will select a pairing in the DAI market. So I'll tap on DAI, then I'll tap on ETH versus DAI, and this will work for this demonstration. Once you tap on the pairing that you wish to trade, you'll be brought into the advanced user interface. And this is where you can use all the advanced features when buying and selling crypto. One of the first things you're likely noticing is the price action chart right here. And this is showing you the assets performance over a selected time frame. In my case, you can see that my chart is currently set to one day intervals. That means each one of these candlesticks represents one day of time. If you want to change the time interval, just tap where it says interval and then select the time frame from this menu that you wish to view. So if I wanted a two hour chart, I'd tap where it says two hours. Now each of these candlesticks represents two hours of time. I do like the daily time frame, so I'm just gonna go ahead and switch it back to that. You can also add an indicator to the chart. So just above the chart, you'll notice I can drag the menus back and forth like so. If you tap on indicators, you're going to get a menu of the different indicators that you can add to the chart. Simply tap the button next to the indicator that you wish to add. So if I want an RSI, I tap the button next to RSI. Now I'll tap on back at the bottom of the screen. And as you can see, I've added the RSI to the bottom of the chart. If I want to remove the RSI, I tap on indicators at the top. Then I'm going to tap the button next to RSI. Then I'll tap the back button at the bottom of the screen. And as you can see, I've removed the RSI from the chart. As easy as that. If we scroll down just a little bit further on this page, like so, this is where we'll find the order book. And the order book is showing us where market participants have placed their buys and sell orders at. And they're placing these orders by using limit orders. And I'll be demonstrating limit orders in this tutorial. On the left-hand side in green, we have what's known as the bids. These are the price points that market participants have placed their buy orders at. On the right side of the order book in red, we have what's known as the asks. And these are the price points that market participants have placed their sell orders at. 
When a trader comes along and executes a market order, they're matched up at the best available price from this order book and the trade is executed immediately. And I'll be covering all the, the order types in this tutorial. If I swipe left, this is where you'll find your trade history. And if I swipe left again, this is where you'll find your open orders. So any limit orders that you've placed on the order book and any stop losses as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and swipe to the right once, swipe right again, and I'm back to the order book. And of course, at the bottom of the screen is where you'll find your buy and sell buttons. So if you're a buyer, you tap on the buy button. If you're a seller, you tap on the sell button. I'll go ahead and just tap on buy here. And this will bring you over to the order form where you can place orders by doing limit orders, market orders, and you can set stop losses by tapping on stop limit. And I'll demonstrate all these order types starting with the limit order. A limit order will allow you to choose a price point to be a buyer or a seller of the asset, but you will need the price of that asset to reach your limit price for this order to fill and execute. For example, you can see at the top of my screen that Ethereum is currently trading at 1,789. Let's imagine that I want to be a buyer at 1,700. To do that, I'd tap on limit price and I'd type that in just like so. Next, I can choose the amount of the asset that I wish to purchase if the price of the asset comes down to 1700 And to do that, I could tap where it says amount and I can put in a custom amount if I want. So I could do something like this or I can choose how much of my available balance I wish to put in this order. And to do that, I would tap where it says total. Now, right below where it says preview buy order, you'll be able to see your available balance. So you know exactly what you're working with. In my case, it's 70 die. So let's just imagine I wanted to put 50 die into this order. I could just type it into the total box there. The other option is using one of these percentages. So if I was to tap on 25%, this means that I'd be putting 25% of my available balance into this order. If I tapped on 50%, that means I'd be putting in 50% of my available balance into this order. For this demonstration, I'll just go ahead and tap on 25%. Once you have your order set up the way that you want it, tap on preview buy order. This will bring you over to the order confirmation page where you can review the details of your order. You'll see in my case here where it says time and force, it says good till cancelled. This means that this order will stay on the order book until it either fills or I manually cancel it. Below that, you're going to see execution and it says allow taker. Now I'm going to point out below execution, you can see the estimated fee is not 0.11 die. What I like to do is I like to tap where it says allow taker and then I like to tap where it says post only. Now you'll notice that my fee came down quite a bit. It's now not 0.07. So whenever I'm using limit orders, I like to set this to post only to save on the fees. Once you have your order confirmation set up the way that you want it, just simply tap on place buy order. Now I've successfully placed that order onto the order book. If the price of Ethereum comes down to 1700, this order will fill and I'll be buying myself some Ethereum. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap on done. And that brings us back to the user interface. Now, if I come down to the order book and I swipe left twice, this is going to bring me over to open orders. And here's where I can see my limit order that I just placed on the order book. If at any point you want to cancel your order, just tap on your order underneath open orders, scroll down and then tap on cancel order. And as you can see, I just removed that order off of the order book. Now we can also use limit orders to sell our crypto as well. So I'm just going to tap on sell. And now let's imagine that I want to sell my Ethereum if the price of Ethereum gets up to 2,200. I come over here to limit price and I type that in. So 2,200, just like so. And for this demonstration, I'll just tap on max. So I'm choosing the amount of Ethereum I wish to sell if the price of Ethereum gets up to 2,200. And in this case, I'll just go ahead and do max. Now that I have this set up the way that I want it, I'm going to tap on preview sell order. I'm going to come down to execution where it says allow taker. I'm going to tap on that and I'm going to switch this over to post only. Now that I have this set the way that I want it, I'm going to tap on place sell order. Now I've successfully placed that limit order to sell Ethereum if the price of Ethereum gets up to 2,200. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on done. Now we're back to my open orders and here's where you can see my limit order to sell. So if I want to cancel that, I can tap on the order I wish to cancel and then scroll down to the bottom, tap on cancel order and I've removed that sell order off of the order book.
Now I'll show you how to place a market order. And these are simple. They're gonna execute immediately at the best available price from the order book. But you will pay a little bit more of a fee for using these orders because you're removing liquidity off of the order book versus adding to the order book by placing a limit order. And for that convenience, you do pay a higher fee. So the first thing we do is just choose if we're gonna be a buyer or a seller. I'll go ahead and just be a buyer. So I'm gonna tap on buy. On the order form here at the top, I'm gonna to tap on market. And now I'm just gonna simply choose how much I wish to buy of the asset. So for this demonstration, I'll just do 25%. Once you have your order set up the way that you want it, tap on preview buy order, and that brings you over to the order confirmation page. Now you'll notice right here, it says estimate slippage, and in this case, it's 0%. Now, when markets are really volatile, sometimes you'll incur what's known as slippage. So if an asset is moving to the upside really fast, it's going to be chewing up all the asks in the order book very quickly. If an asset is absolutely plummeting to the downside, it's going to be chewing up all the bids in the order book really fast. Remember, a market order executes immediately at the best available price. So if the price of the asset is moving really fast, you might not get the price point that you intended. That's what's known as slippage, and Coinbase will estimate that for you. So the market's not very volatile right now, so Coinbase is telling me that there's going to be zero slippage on this. So things are looking good here. I'm just going to go ahead and tap on place buy order. And as you can see, that order executed immediately at the best available price from the order book. So I'll just go ahead and tap on done. If I want to use a market order to sell, I'd tap where it says sell, tap on market, choose the amount that you wish to sell, I'll just do 25%, then tap on preview sell order, check out everything on the order confirmation page, make sure it's what you intended, then tap on place sell order. Now, as you can see, I just sold some Ethereum immediately at the best available price from the order book. So I'll just go ahead and tap on done. To set up a stop loss, we first need to choose a stop price. This is going to be a price point that serves as a condition to tell Coinbase to place a limit order to sell our coins. So just for fun, I'm going to hold down on my chart and bring up my crosshairs. And let's go ahead and drag them up to the bottom of that wick on that red candle there. Good enough for this demonstration. Let's imagine we're looking at that wick and we're thinking to ourselves, if price begins to close below that wick, maybe it's becoming probable that the price will continue to decrease in value. So maybe we want to use that as our stop price. We can see on the Y axis of the chart, there's a price point correlating to that wick coming in at 1,694. So let's type that into stop price. So what we need to do from here is tap where it says sell, tap on stop limit, tap where it says stop price, and that's where we type that in. So 1,694. This price point is going to be the condition that tells Coinbase to place a limit order to sell our coins. So the next thing I need to do is choose a limit price. We'll tap where it says limit price. And for this demonstration, let's just imagine I want to use 1,550 as my limit price. Now, there's a couple things to know about this. The first thing is make sure to leave enough breathing room between your limit price and your stop price. You want to make sure that if your stop price gets hit by price action, that Coinbase has enough time to sell your coins. If price is moving really fast and gets below your limit price before Coinbase sells your coins, what will happen is Coinbase will be simply placing this as a limit order onto the order book. So you'll still be holding onto your coins and you'll be waiting for price to bounce and come back up to your limit price before selling your coins. And there's no guarantee that that will happen. So you wanna make sure there's enough breathing room between that stop price and limit price. And Coinbase is pretty quick about selling your coins. The second thing to know is that if your stop price gets hit, so in my case, if Ethereum decreased and hit 1,694, my coins are gonna sell for the limit price of 1,550 or better. So if there's a better price available on the order book, when my stop price gets hit, my coins will sell for a higher price than 1,550. So you can feel comfortable leaving enough breathing room here because it, it's going to sell for the best available price off of the order book anyways. The big thing is, is you just wanna make sure that price doesn't just shred right through and get below your limit price before Coinbase sells your coins. After that, choose how much of the asset you wish to sell if your stop loss gets hit. So for this demonstration, I'll just tap on max to sell all of my Ethereum if my stop loss gets hit. Once you have this set up the way that you want it, tap on preview sell order, 
This brings you over to the order confirmation page. So confirm the details. So in my case here, if the price of Ethereum hits 1,694, Coinbase will sell my coins for a price of 1,550 or better if there's a better price point available on the order book when my stop price gets hit. We can see time and force is good till canceled. And that means the stop loss will remain active until I either cancel it or it gets hit. This all looks good to me. So I'm just gonna simply tap on place sell order. Now I've successfully placed that stop loss. I'm gonna tap on done. I'm gonna scroll down this page just a little bit to the order book. I'm gonna swipe left two times. And this brings me over to my open orders. And here's where you can see the stop limit that I just set. It's as easy as that. If at any point you wanna cancel your stop loss, just come over to open orders, tap on your stop limit, scroll down to the bottom, tap on cancel order. And as you can see, I just removed that stop limit. And there you have it, your introduction on how to use Coinbase in advanced mode on mobile app. If you got some value out of that, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe. Also feel free to check out some of my other Coinbase tutorials, which I've put together for you in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for coming by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.